Hello, and welcome to the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We're recording this on Sunday morning, October 16th, 2022. I'm Larry Rhodes, or Daughter 5, and as usual, we have our co-host, Wombat, on the line with us. Hello, Wombat. Isn't it amazing that we live in a universe where I'm the co-host to this show? Isn't that proof that God exists? Uh -huh. <laughs> well, some God, maybe. <laughs> we won't know which. It's an evil anyway. God. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> and today's guests are Dread Pirate Higgs from Western ah. Canada. Hello. And John Richards from England. Welcome, welcome. How the devil are you? <laughs> uh, doing well. Thank you. Digital Free Thought Radio Hour is a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, and the sciences. And conversely, we'll also talk about religion, religious faiths, gods, holy books, and superstition. And if you get the feeling that you're the only non-believer in your town, well, you're just not, especially if you live in Knoxville. Here in Knoxville, in the middle of the Bible Belt, we have a group of over a thousand of us. It's called the Atheist Society of Knoxville, or ASK. And we'll tell you more about that group after the mid-show break. Wombat, what's our topic today? Healing by faith alone. And it's going to be an impressive topic today. One where we get a lot of stuff off of our chest. But what about stuff in our stomach? Maybe we can fill up on some noodly goodness. And who better to lead us <laughs> on a weekly invocation by our own Dread Pirate Higgs? Indeed. I'm called to invoke the power of the true creator of the universe the drunken tolerator of all lesser and more recent gods, the maintainer of gravity here on Earth. May the great flying spaghetti monster rouse himself from his stupor and let his noodly appendages ground each of us in our seats. Amen. Amen. Guys, I wanted to catch up. Sorry for the late start. Uh, some, some background talk. I think I mistook which hour we started at, but I think we're anticipating a daylight savings time change. So maybe I just got a little too excited for that. <clears throat> but guys, I do want to catch up on you. I want to catch up on you here and now. Dredd, how you been? Oh, not too bad. I've been busy working. So uh, that's why I wasn't able to make it last week. I was out on a, on a set in a fairly remote area. So um yeah, and I was out of data, as it turned out. You were on a what? I, I was on a set. Ah. Oh. Like a, a movie, a film set. Okay, okay. Very, but you said you were on a blank data, on a on a data? I was out of data, out of data on my on my. Oh, phone. you're out, out, of, out data. of data. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, yeah. So, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, okay, yeah, okay. I was out of data. I thought you said but, you were uh, on a date. And <laughs> <laughs> Well, my wife probably wouldn't appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But okay. uh, there's a couple of a couple of interesting news items from my neck of the woods. Uh, sure. I did, uh, you know, I'd uh, gotten um, an FOI request, I think I had mentioned, from ICBC, our insurance corporation, the one I'm having this battle with. Sure. And uh, they sent 691 pages of fully redacted uh, emails. And so I, I sent a, a complaint to the Office of the Information uh information freedom of information officer here in bc mm. and they've decided to take it on and so nice they've yeah so they've uh, demanded icbc provide the unsevered documents in full within 15 days so it's already coming up now good um and then uh they'll have a uh, an officer assigned to it to go through those documents and see what um can be provided because certainly the full redaction of every email seems a little excessive right. and certainly is not in the spirit of uh, freedom of information no, request, not right? at all. Or, or, um, or in the or in the spirit of saving black ink i would have thought <laughs> <laughs> there you go it's yeah it takes up a lot of toner um mm. and and also on the on the other front uh with my security license uh i have heard back from the office of the ombudsman who is reviewing my file to um, hopefully come to it because they have the power to recommend um, that it is not in the mandate of any government agency to review uh, the veracity of a person's religious belief. Good. Um, and this, is, of course, is already demonstrated in other jurisdictions. So it's I just a matter of bringing BC up to speed. So if so, it's actually working on two fronts here. If I can get the ombudsman to make the recommendation to the Minister of Justice, 
and get my uh, dot security license with my Tricorn on, then it just becomes a simple matter of it, trend, you know, moving over to ICBC um, to do the same thing. So, yeah, right. so that's what I'm up to. Fred, I can't tell you how deeply I admire the work that you're putting in. In my head, Ooh. it's um, it's a it's an evil in in the, in an atheist secular term. It's an evil when you know dogma like this spreads without any sort of resistance or question to it. Yeah. And yeah. in my head, it's like, it's not the people who perpetrate the dogma that should be at fault. It's the ones who know it's bad, but don't say right. anything. Exactly. Because that's what allows right. the culture to change. Because it yep. only takes one crazy person to change. I mean, for a bunch of quiet listeners to change a culture. But for yep. you to stand up and make a voice about this is is what I hope more people would take example from. We need more leaders. Well, I, I appreciate that. And I can't tell you how many times I... I despair over mm. this uh, battle I've been fighting since 2016 mm. and, you know, almost entirely on my own. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, it's, and so thank you. I, I really appreciate the kind words. I really don't want to make you feel like you are on your own. You are definitely doing most of the legwork, but you, you definitely have our support and right on. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. You are the spokesman for the silent ma majority. Right. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> And maybe we can talk more about that despair because it is something that you can feel, especially when you talk to like people who are like so deep in their indoctrination, particularly mm -hmm. when it comes to like things that you just know aren't true, that you can right. demonstrate are true, but they want to believe it's true and are making concessions to believe that. But before we get into it, John Richards, I want to know about you and your quest overseas. When will that tugboat make it to the other side of the screen? What is going <laughs> on with the King of England? Tell me everything that you know. And we'll talk about it maybe more today in Afghanistan. <laughs> Well, I don't know how political you want to get, but we've got a <laughs> we've got a, a puppet for a prime minister at the moment. Okay. And the country is being country is being run run by the newly appointed, and I mean newly yesterday, Chancellor of the Exchequer. So the likelihood is that we'll have yet another prime minister in a very short time, honestly. But I wanted to say right. that I'm never out of data because my contract is unlimited. However, this doesn't mean unlimited dates, unfortunately. Okay. <laughs> As, okay. <laughs> you gotta separate the two, you see. There's, there's, there's three. Data. There's data, there's <laughs> dates, and there's like going out with people. And then there's also calendar <laughs> dates too. So it's this, it's a weird cinnamon. What are you gonna do? And if you don't <laughs> like dates, you can have figs. True, true. Any, true. Anyway, Way to tell you what, to tell you what I personally have been up to, mm. last night we had a very good free thought hour, and it wasn't, it was only because our guest didn't turn up. She phoned in sick. Poor lady, she's got upper respiratory infection. She can't speak at the moment, so that did with her prospects of being our guest. So Tercia and I flew by the seat of our pants nice. and addressed some of the misconceptions that people have with evolution. It was fun. Good. You should watch it. Okay, absolutely. Mm. Let's get this on. Let's get on the show. I'm actually going to check that out because I, I was talking about evolution uh, earlier this week. Larry? Well, I'm, I mentioned the fact that the, only the previous Sunday, we had you and I had talked about idiotic um, design, mm. which, was, which was very relevant. Very cool. So it could be like a follow-up to the show. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Larry? Give me yeah. an update on what you're doing. Are you trolling on the internet right now? Tell me what's going on. No, uh, <laughs> within reason came up to visit Sheila and I yesterday. And uh, <clears throat> we went out to lunch and it was all good. And she visited for a while. And I thought she was going to join us on the show today, uh, but she's not here. And maybe she got caught in the time change or something too. So I'm, sure. I'm texting her to say, hey, we're on. Sure, sure, but, sure, sure. Yeah. But how you been? So, oh, fine. Uh, boring life. Work, work day, mm -hmm. play games in the evening. And um, I didn't ride my motorcycle or anything this week, so kind of boring. Not much VR going motorcycling. On. Not that huh? much going on. Just just the life of a of a of a wonderful retiree having fun and, yep. and still working yep. at the same time. Great. Yep. Yep. So yep. I cool. I was working in my job. Speaking of work, and I was working in my job. I work with a lot of scientists. Um, one in particular I know uh, knows that I'm an atheist and that he's a Christian. And we were talking about, um, he wanted to see a world map because he wanted to know where my family is from. And I told, I have some family from St. Thomas. He's just like, where's that, the Bahamas? I'm like, no, it's a little bit more south. 
and I pulled up a picture <clears> of <throat> the globe and he's like, oh, look at that. That's so cool. And you said your family came from here and here. I can tell because the facial features are similar to like these people who I've seen in like Africa and maybe even a little bit in India. And I was like, oh, that's cool. And I'm, and I'm my head, I'm like, where is this going? But in his head, he's like, I just wanted to explain like, you know, when the reason why people share fem- similar facial structures and skin color is largely just geographical because you started out with human beings in Africa, they spread out and the closer mm-hmm. they stayed at the equator, the more their skin maintained melanin. And right. I was like, oh, this is really fancy for a Christian to tell me this. Because mm-hmm. one, I already knew it, but like two, right. I just I'm just mm-hmm. waiting for like the balls to drop because like uh-huh. this is the uh-huh. overlap with the Christian thing. You guys know what I'm talking about. Every uh-huh. moment. Yeah. And so he's yeah. just like, you know, the humans spread out and the ones who are on the north, they evolutionarily stayed up. I'm like, oh, so you believe in evolution? It's like, yeah, 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 yeah. Of course I do. Of course I do. I'm a scientist. It's like, okay, he is also a Christian too. And I'm like, you believe humans evolved? And he's like, yes, of course. And I'm like, from a from a non-human species. And he's like, yes, of course. And I'm like, this is very interesting. And he, and he's even showing me like, you know, I even think tectonic plates are a thing. Like look at India and how it's shaped. And then look at like Africa and you can see how they like originally used to be together. Mm-hmm. And you can measure the tectonic plates. You can see them on a satellite. He's just like, okay, so you think tectonic plates are a thing? Ev- human evolution. And the age of the earth is old. Yeah. And the age of the earth isn't like under 10,000 years. I'm like, oh, this is very interesting because a lot of Christians, I said this, a lot of Christians don't believe mm. that. And he's well, like, well, it, listen, contra- I- it directly contradicts the Bible. So correct, correct, yeah. correct. Mm. Right. But uh-huh. he, I, I, I asked, I told him a lot of Christians don't believe it. he's like, well, you know, a lot of Christians say a lot of different things, but I will never let my religious beliefs interfere with reality because I what? see reality as more important. And I'm like, so even if <laughs> the Bible said that Adam and Eve were the first two people and that and that doesn't comply to the 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 scientific understanding of like how you know humans evolved in Africa and then went through you know different cultures and different geographic locations, like you're fine with that contrasting. He's like, yeah, of course, that's definitely a contrast. I'm like, in which case the Bible would be wrong? He's like, yeah, well, the Bible's wrong there. I'm like, well then why do you believe in a God, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. And particularly that religion. Right, right, but, right. Yeah. Go yeah. ahead, Larry, go ahead. Well, I was saying, he says, uh, he says, my religion is one thing, and reality is something else. Right. right then, he just got through saying that his religion is not based on reality. It's not based on reality, right, yeah. right, right. But he, oh, is he not is, making the connection? Oh, there's a minefield, there's a minefield, there's a minefield. Well, that's, right? that's a pretty serious uh, sign of cognitive dissonance. Yes, mm-hmm essentially what we're talking about here is cognitive dissonance and of course mm-hmm. you know i love poking at that i shouldn't have poked yeah. at it at like you know four <laughs> o'clock on a friday you're a I pokey man i want to know <laughs> i would have said can i have it in writing that your religion is unreal ah <laughs> yeah. very good very good yeah, yeah. Nothing, or no may i quote you that. on that yeah. yes <laughs> so basically i thought i had like a perfect example of like a guy who just needed like two seconds to maybe a minute to think about everything he just said to realize maybe i don't have as much of a good reason to believe in this god so i'm like well, why do you believe in a god i just want to at least know i know which god he's talking about but why yeah. do you believe in a god open topic i like to when i do these questionings i don't like to go through a flow chart i really want the person to expound on the belief and give me like their best reasoning without in like, their own words right. in their own words mm-hmm. so why do you believe in a god and it started with that's such a great question, Ty. Listen, this is really important to me. Uh, I I had so many different experiences that led to this. And I'm like, okay, so personal experiences, that's great. Tell me about like the best one. He's like, I have the best one for you. Listen, I had a friend and he's Indian. I had a friend and I bring that up because culturally there are a lot of Hindus. And so he is, said, is he Indian Indian or Red Indian? <laughs> I don't know how to respond to that, but he he's from <laughs> India. And he said, listen, I had a friend who brought me to a church and the for the first time. And what was amazing was I was in the in the pews and the pastor comes up on the pews and he looks around and guess what he did? He looked straight at me and he said, I know what your name is. And he knew my name and I couldn't believe it. And I'm like, and then what me? I'm like, and then what? he's like, well, no, I'm just saying that's one of the experiences I had. And I'm like. How did you go from that to a God exists? <laughs> in, my head, I, God. in my mouth, in my head, I, I exclaimed that out. 
And I, I apologize probably now and retroactively because I realized that could have like started a series of events where like my volume started going up. But I was just so shocked that this man who is a scientist, a PhD, fell for essentially just a, you know, what could have essentially just been a parlor trick. Of, yeah, it's uh, a Peter mm -hmm. Popoff trick, right? Right. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Of just like, oh, pointed at a guy, knows his name. It's like, you went from that to a God exists? Like, well, how did he know my name? He knew where I worked. Did he have, go on did ahead. He have go on ahead. Don't. I didn't even want to go into that. I didn't want to go into that. But afterwards, he's like, I saw this man do something also incredible. It's like, I was trying to explain to him, like, maybe he was a time traveler. Maybe he had, a, maybe he was a sorcerer. Maybe he was a telepath. Like, why did you jump to God? And which in my head is far more incredible than a guy who has a time machine or right. can read people's minds. At least that would be natural. Right. Or an alien. Like, you went to the most extreme possible case, a God existing. And as that, as your answer, like, how did you not know it was any of these things or just a trick that you fell for, like a little electronic device? He's like, listen, I'll tell you why. Because I saw the most incredible thing happen. During that same uh, presentation, he brought up a person who was sick and he touched that person. And let me tell you something. This He said, this person was seen by five doctors, five doctors who all said the same thing. This person couldn't be healed. He touched this person and he healed that person in the name of Jesus. And that's why, that's one of the reasons why I believe. And in my head, I'm just, I'm like, ah, why do, why do, why do scientists, especially why scientists. scientists of yeah, all yeah. people fall for stuff like this? Mm -hmm. And I want to talk about faith healing and personal experiences today and why that could be so motivating for someone to believe in something they already potentially want to be true. Larry, what do you think? Well, when people uh, bring that to me, mm -hmm. I've got like I've got a friend who uh, I've got two or three friends that I've I had the same pretty much same conversation with them. And uh, I said, what, what convinced you that God is real? Oh, well, I had I had uh, this intense little cancer. And and, uh, you know, after I prayed, it went away. And and I, and I, I keep wanting to scream at him like you did your friend with this different note. Why did you have intestinal cancer if God loves you and is looking out for you and trying to protect you? Why did you, why do you have cancer in the first place? Where was God when you were getting yeah, that yeah. cancer? Yeah. You know, but there's nobody a, seems to consider that. There's a dark know? return to that too, in that, why did you get healed? Why did God choose you to be healed of cancer? And what about the people who do believe in God who weren't healed? Right. Or the I've many got an people aunt. who die yeah. all the time who mm -hmm. could have been saved or would change their mind if they were miraculously healed, but just right. were died anyway. Yeah. Why yeah. is God that's a, confusing certain people and not others? Yeah. That's right. a, f a familiar thing uh, in the aftermath of plane crashes mm. where, you know, uh, the survivors in, you know, an otherwise deadly uh, air crash uh, are praising God say, right. well, God saved me for some special purpose. Right. Mm -hmm. It's like, right. what? And, and I, what kills me is how they blame the victim so many times. You were talking about, why did you get healed when this other pe person didn't get healed? Right. Well, I must have prayed more. I must have been more pious. Yeah. I or went I, to church more. So they're putting the blame for it on yeah. the victim exactly. who, who, who died from it. Right. And the and it's just a sad thing because the people who die from things like this, plane crashes or cancer, can't speak for themselves. And so it only bolsters the narrative of the ones who survive yeah. who do say, yeah. well, God saved me. You know what's yeah. weird? It's the boxer effect. If you guys haven't noticed it, whenever there's two men boxing and they both have like Jesus crosses tattooed on their arm, right? <laughs> they got mm -hmm. crosses and the, and, the, and the beads and everything like that. One yeah, knocks yeah. out the other one viciously. And then they go in interviews like, well, what would you like to say? I just want to thank God for this victory. Yeah. I just really mm -hmm. want to thank him. It's like, yeah, but like if the other guy won and he knocked you out, he'd be doing the same thing too. A Christian got knocked out at the end of the day. Like yeah. what makes what makes you and what no one ever blames God in their in their consolatory interview. So it just seems like what's going on there? What's going on there? John Richard, mm -hmm. you want to weigh in on this? Yeah, sure. Well, I wanted to because what, what you've reported there. Uh, the, the man uh, having his name recognized, the, yes. the other man, uh, the, or the woman having her broken leg or bent leg straightened or whatever it was, mm. those are examples of anecdotes. And I, I, one, of my, one of my contacts, I'd like to call her a friend, is Professor Sophie Scott, who's just been given a CBE by, I think, the new king. And she, we saw a video on must have been Twitter of a pair of parrots because she's 
She's in, she's the lead of the Department of Neuroscience at University College London. And we saw this video on, on uh, Twitter that has got a pair of parrots and they're, they're talking parrots and they've learned to insult people. So people go by and they get called names by these parrots, but the, the clincher is the parrots then laugh together. So it, it looks... <laughs> It looks very realistic, as though they they are they are behaving intelligently. But of course, that's just behaviour that they've copied. Sure. They've seen us insulting yeah. people and laughing together, and they've picked up on it. So I showed this to, to Professor Sophie Scott, and um, and she said that's a nice story. And I could tell from the way she'd written it that it, the accent was on the story because <laughs> it's not evidence. It's not right. evidence, so I shared right. it with another. It's another anecdote. Another. Yeah. Exactly. Yes, exactly. Yeah. You get the point. Go yeah. ahead, Larry. Um, no, I was talking about your scientific friend. If he had, if he had seen that type of thing uh, at a magic magician show, yes, if he'd gone uh, into yeah. a, a venue where there was a magician on stage and he was doing Correct. all kinds of miraculous yeah. stuff, he would think it was a trick. But yes. you put the same trick in a church. And yeah, the person yeah. is just blown away by the power because of God. They're willing to suspend this because they want right. what the pastor says to be right. true. Like in and my it's head, also, it's also a, a crowd thing, you know, sure. when the when the it's crowd moves. Effervescence. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 I wanna I um, wanna highlight. Oh, go ahead, Dred. Go ahead. Well, I was I was just gonna say that not all people are necessarily taken in by the faith aspect of magical healing. Mm -hmm. uh, my my dad, for instance, uh is uh an atheist, uh, you know, pretty staunch about it. Uh, nevertheless, he takes uh, apple cider vinegar every morning because he thinks it has this special property that, you know, it's a cure all. Uh, and oh, again, no. it's, it's really it's just magical thinking. Mm -hmm. And you know, I've I've sat down and we've done you know the uh, Socratic examination thing, and he comes to the realization that it's probably all in his head. But he still does it. Well, well maybe he likes it. I don't know. There's some <laughs> yeah, yeah. weird comfort he maybe derives he likes, from. Maybe that. he's a vinegarolic. Is that the yeah. right way to say it? Yeah. A it. He used maybe to be it's... an alcoholic. Now he's a vinegarolic. Yeah. yeah. Maybe yeah. it's the old, you don't see any elephants around me yeah. now <laughs> yeah. type of thing. I'm going to have to bring that up. I'm going to mm -hmm. say, you're a vinegarolic. There you go. There you go. <laughs> are you, a are you, I just traded one poison for another. Yeah. yeah. Are you, are you sure it's vinegar in that bottle and not the predecessor? Of <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. uh, I wanted to make a point because Larry you, and and both dread you were saying like a magic trick is is just when it's put into a, a church setting, people are more willing to believe it. But the weird thing about a magic trick is that it's designed such that the people who see the trick, when they explain what happened, it's never how it happened. The narrative of explaining a, narr a magic trick from someone who doesn't know the mechanics behind it is always far more fantastical than the actual practice of doing the trick. For example, I saw a guy shuffle a card, shuffle a whole deck of cards, shuffled it again, cut the deck, showed me like all the cards were randomly displayed, shuffled it one more time, and then from the top, he pulled out four aces. I don't know how he did that. That was amazing. Like, that is not what that guy did. That guy probably did mm -hmm. a very sophisticated maneuver of card trickery hand mm -hmm. slide of hand that you just didn't catch that's far more boring once you know how the trick is actually done but in retelling the narrative it's far more fantastic because it makes this guy seem like he's supernatural or has some mm -hmm. capability yeah, yeah. of controlling probability yeah. that is yeah. inherently yeah. what a trick is it's when mm -hmm. you can enjoy it for a piece of entertainment it's fantastic but when you take it from a magical setting what you, you do in your head is like these are just card tricks to a church setting yes. where it's this is actually things that happen and we all in this group believe that this is happening and this is reality and this actually does exist, but it's the same clever sleight of hand or sleight of words. That is now in my head, a dishonest act, but it could be done genuinely by people who, who genuinely believe it or who think they're doing a good thing by purporting this narrative. Dred, what do you right. think? Uh, I was going to say that um, it's interesting in some cases where uh, a person's been shown a magic trick uh, that they will not believe the person who did it, that it was a trick. They'll say, no, it can't be a trick. You, you know, that's magic. That's, that's real magic. You just I would have seen it. 
and they and they will yeah. they will just not let it go they will not um allow themselves to feel like they've been deceived you know what i mean yeah, yeah. um they they will say you know no you just did real magic you're lying to me by saying it's a trick sure like i, I they seen just that. really want to believe in magic yeah they want to believe in magic they want to believe and that's such a good point because i did bring this up to my friend and i said listen if there was a sorcerer and we brought you to him and, and like an audience and he knew who your <clears> name was and he said i know what your name is i know what your profession is you can interview me afterwards i'll happily talk to you i i figured out all these things about you your birthday everything that i couldn't have possibly known otherwise using sorcery i'm a sorcerer i would say i asked him would you believe in sorcery then and he said no and i was like okay that's interesting what if and previously he the pastor did a faith healing event and that really impressed him i said what if we had we brought back another pastor who believed in vishnu or 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 buddha or some or allah and yeah. said listen i'm going to take this guy who has half an arm i'm going to touch him and then his arm is going to grow back and yeah. he does that and we see that and we can interview him and hold him afterwards would you believe in those other guys he's like no 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 ty no, this is, you're not understanding. And then he tried to repeat his pastor story to me again. It's just like, hey, I don't want to hear, no. I, I understand the mechanics. I'm trying yeah, to get and, the and That doesn't even mention the leap of logic. Right, I mean, right. It's right. one thing to say, okay, this person miraculously or magically mm. or sleight of hand changed this person's leg. Yes. But automatically they take the leap to, it was a God. And right. two, it was another leap to, it was this particular God. Correct. And they don't recognize that there's any leap in there at all. We really need yeah. to take a break. <laughs> we, uh, station uh, identification. But go ahead. Can I just say, for that reason, when when talking about gods to be believers, I always use the word "your" in front. I always say "your god", god. Mm -hmm. to make right. the point that there's other yeah. ones. You know, good point. Right. Correct. Right. And so, stay tuned for the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. We're on WOZO Radio, 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. And we'll be where Tennessee just beat Alabama, by the way, for the first time in a couple of decades. We'll be right back after this short break. Had to throw that in there. Welcome back to the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. I'm Daughter Five, and we're on WOZO Radio. 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Let's take a moment to talk about the Atheist Society of Knoxville. ASK was founded in 2002. We're in our 20th year and have over a thousand members. We have weekly in-person meetings every Tuesday night or evening at Knoxville's Old City at Barley's Tap Room and Pizzeria. We also have uh, weekly Zoom meetings on Tuesday evening too, start about six o'clock. Uh, the ones at Barley's, the in-person meeting starts around 5.30. So if you'd like to join us, uh, just come on down to Barley's and join us. Or if you'd like to join the Zoom meeting, email us at, Nos at X, X, ask an atheist at knoxvilleatheist.org or let's chat se at gmail.com. By the way, if you don't live in Knoxville, you, sh you should still go to Meetup and uh, search for an atheist group in your town. Don't find one? Start one. Start one. Start one. Right. Well, Matt, where do we want to pick up? I want to. I want to get back to this point of my uh, Christian scientist friend, who is both a scientist and a Christian, he has this immaculate cognitive dissonance, and we're talking to him about why he believed in God, and he said well, it was because I went to a place where a pastor knew my name without me ever telling him, and mm -hmm. he did some faith healing. <clears throat> And I said, okay, well, I think we can talk about the 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 two combined because that's largely just a personal experience that you had that was very vivid for you. And I said, what if we brought you to a sorcerer who knew your name and could heal people, Br grow back an arm from the elbow that we can chop it off and you could touch a person and it grows back in? Would you believe in sorceries? And he's like, no, 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 because I know that's just a trick. I'm like, okay, that's interesting. What if we had uh, a Muslim or a, a Islam uh, representative who touched a person and grew back his arm? And he's like, Ty. I'm not going to believe it if it's a person who represents Islam or Buddhism or anything like that. And I said, well, what if it was another Christian? What if we've got another Christian there? It was like, no, because I don't care about the pastor. I care about Jesus Christ. And I only <laughs> care if people are doing it for in the name of Jesus Christ. So I said, oh, okay, fine. What if we got back, if we just, I brought back a guy who claimed to be Jesus Christ. 
and we can interview him afterwards and we can hold him and we can touch him and we can cut off a person's arm and he can be like, I'm Jesus Christ. I'm going to touch this guy. And the arm miraculously grows back in front of our eyes. And he says he's Jesus and he's willing to talk to us afterwards. Would you believe it? Would you believe that guy was at least Jesus Christ then? He's like, no, of course I wouldn't. I'm like, that's very bizarre. So then what makes you believe that Jesus ever healed anybody? He's like, because it was in the Bible. <laughs> I was like, oh so because someone said it in the Bible, you believe it. But if we have the opportunity to actually bring someone from the Bible here to the present, and you can talk to them, touch them, hold them, and see the things for yourself, the claims that were made in the Bible, you can see it for yourself and test it and interview afterwards. You wouldn't believe it then. It's like, no. And I'm like, then why do you believe it when it's in the Bible? And I mm. think that was largely when the conversation started going back in, into the. Well, I can imagine the, because weren't you saying he was at the same time saying, well, the, the Bible's wrong about this and I'm wrong about that. Yes. Wrong about that. How do you figure out which is which? When you have a book that you already know can be wrong about certain things, why do you believe it on other claims? Right. What's it's, your it's, test to know which how, one's exactly, true or not? That's the test. And how you, do you? Well, I, I, I wanted to bring up uh, Lo Ma here. I posted this in chat. Uh, Lo mm -hmm. Ma said, uh, it's easy to reverse that healing story. Uh, it, my friend went to five faith healers who said they couldn't they couldn't be healed and then went to an oncologist yeah. and, and was subsequently yeah. healed. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Also, uh, John Richards, go so, ahead. Go ahead. So I'd like to ask your friend, how, what his criteria are how does he know what is a reliable source of information if right. his source of information is unreliable he's right. recognized that his yeah. bible doesn't work so and you know it's the sort of thing where when you know you have a, a christian who feels like they're on the ropes and they start doing the word soup i'm just going to keep saying things yeah because it right. doesn't have to make sense because right. most people never correct me when i talk right. about god in this way so if as long as i just keep talking i'm good i hate yeah. when i have to sit through that especially when i'm not doing it in an adversarial sense i'm having this conversation in their benefit to try to make them realize that there are standards for believing things and it's if it's in your interest to believe in this true thing that you think is the most important true thing in your life that you should also hold it to the same criteria that you hold to anything else and yeah. if you don't hold it you might potentially lead yourself on the path where you're believing in something that you think is true that may not actually be true and i'm not the well, one saying that it's not true i'm the one saying you're not having a standard that's equivalent between the things that we agree are scientifically testable to come to a certain conclusion like the color of people's skin and why they have more melanin than others or well, the the movement right. of tectonic plates in the continents or uh how humans evolve from a non-human species each time i was like how do you know that well scientific evidence well, how do you know about scientific evidence? How do you know scientific evidence? Well, then what right, about right. the God belief? Well, once upon a time, my friend took me to a uh, a cool place and I saw, and listen, Ty, listen, I know you're not going to believe this, but it's like, why do you have a different standard? That's the most important thing that you believe in. Come on. Yeah. And so, yeah. you know, I was really, really sad by that. And then, listen, I keep remembering, oh, but we got things to talk about. But listen, the one <laughs> of the things that really irked me was the fact that he said, listen, I believe in the faith healing because he brought up a person who five doctors could not resolve this this foot crooked. Well, how does he know that? Did he interview the doctors? Yes. No, I no, mean, he, he did it. He believed it because word. the pastor told him that. Right. But right. listen, when someone, says, when someone says, you know how the Bible's true? Because you have four different people talking about the same story. And like in my head, that's just one big, that's just one big claim. And all they did was fracture it. Like some of those people didn't couldn't even spell as well as they were in <laughs> were not literate. Um, all right. Anyway, not to get too much well, of the soup. Not to get too much well, of the I've, I've been doing some, as you know, I like doing taking down of uh, Frank Turek. I've been doing sure. Frank Turek debunking. And um one recently dealt with that very subject. How how can you justify believing in the gospels? And right. he, he said that um, if we expect a historical document to be reliable, it needs to accurately describe the details of the surrounding culture, people, places, and public practices. So I did a takedown of him and pointed out that this could also apply to Spider-Man, yes. Harry Potter, right. the, the, the Dickens story of uh, Great Expectations, because they've Every all got other holy book. 
they, yeah. Yeah, they've yeah. all got yeah. well described locations sure. in there but right there's no there's no evidence for any event right and the thing is just because you have a book that four people agree on if you have four people that agree something even in the same room doesn't make it a fact that's not no, a right. good that's standard true. to determine if two things are true or things are actually false just having four people agree on it or five people agree on it and he looked me in the eye and he's just like but five doctors all said it's like even if that was true even if it was true that five doctors agreed that this lady's legs were crooked and couldn't be healed by any and, sort and of doctors of what a doctor of english <laughs> a doctor of scientology what you know yeah it's like five religious there been, studies there have been yeah, historical, five doctors of religious studies historic history has shown us that five people can be wrong about something all the time, including yeah. evolution. How many people were argumentative against Charles Darwin when he was like, I actually Absolutely. think humans are just a product of evolution like cows or birds or pigeons or any other animal species. Yeah. How many doctors disagreed that you shouldn't wash your hands when you try to give birth to people because germs aren't a real thing because they didn't understand germ theory back in the day. And it goes yeah. into even more harmful beliefs where it's like, Black people don't feel as much pain because their skin is thicker. Like we've had, we've re only recently <laughs> gone over that right. from like the 1960s. Like there's, there, you can be a doctor and be wrong. And just because you're mm -hmm. around other wrong doctors doesn't make your wrong opinions right. Mm -hmm. And at that point, yeah. I think that was like more or less the end of the argument. John Rich is what do you think? Well, on the subject of Darwin, mm -hmm. at that time, about 160 or 165 years ago, his, his ideas, his understanding of evolution by natural selection were quickly adopted, at least in this country. <laughs> That's so great. It, 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 was, it was only in uh, a bit, uh, 1910 America or thereabouts mm -hmm. that uh, the, the uh, evangelicals got hold of it and right. started to bring up this anti-evolution movement. Right, right, right. I Listen, I, I, I applaud... I applaud England for a lot of things. And and so especially their use of Max. Yeah, yeah, exactly. American <laughs> products are so great, aren't they? But I'm also saying like you can easily find a hundred, four hundred doctors in America who would all disagree that evolution is an actual thing, science teachers included. Yeah. yeah that yeah. doesn't make it wrong. It's not an argument by ad popularum. It is right. a higher it's a higher standard of argument and, and methodology that we apply you know, determining things in reality for it. Not just, well, a group of people disagree that it's wrong, therefore it's not true. I wish my friend would think about these things. Oh, go on, John Richards. How many people's opinions make a fact? How many people's opinions make a fact? How many people does it take to say the same story over and over again to make it a fact? The, the answer is an infinite number. Yeah. <laughs> go on, Larry. Um, no, I just wanted to thank you for taking the time to sit down and, and discuss all this with him. And I know how, mm. how well you do it with your uh, street epistemology or scientific uh, Socratic examination. I appreciate it. Anyway, that. good on you, mate, as thank it were. Uh, I understand we have some listener comments you want to get to before the end of the show. Good point. Uh, we'll start with on the show. Dred, what do you got? Well, I was just going to say um, there's a very good interview with uh, Peter Bogosian. He uh, is interviewed on Lawrence Krauss's um, yes. podcast. Uh, so it's definitely something worth checking out. Um, and it was just this week that he did it. Um, it's yes. his oh, Origins, Origins podcast. That's right. the one with Lawrence Krauss. And he does a, an hour and a half and, with uh, Peter Bogosian. Yeah. Nice. And you can hear it for free, but you've got to pay to see it. Right. So we got a listener comment from our Reddit chat that's open. Thank you guys so much for leaving comments. Uh, Anonymous says, believers and other gods say the same thing, and they are, and they say you're wrong. You can't both be right, and you, but you can both be wrong. And let me just reread that. So believers and other gods say the same thing and say that you're wrong, but you can't both be right, but you can both be wrong. So if you had sure. Hindus who say, listen, my pastor said this, and that's why your God, your Christian Jesus representative is wrong, like you can't both be right. So how can I, as the outsider, figure out which one of you is right? Because we could live in a world where both of you are incorrect, right? Um, yeah. Let's see. Geophagus, a uh, uh, regular commenter on the show says, how do you get to God from that? Telepathy, maybe. But even if it really happened, I don't see the God connection. Right. I, mm -hmm. Right? You could have More like God radio waves. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> a little did, did you 
Did yeah, you say the name Geophagus? Yes. Uh, Dirt? Yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's an awesome name. <laughs> okay, okay. A crew one says possibly telepathy, but I don't see any theological reason. A lot of the comments seem to be based on this. And the reason why I bring that up is you could talk, you, you that pastor could have been a time traveler. He could have been a magical man. He could have been from the future. He could have been a sorcerer. An alien. He could alien. have been an alien using high-tech mm -hmm. technology. He could have been an inventor in his room who figured out some way to read minds over over in his basement and never could have been he didn't want to Peter Popov in, desi in disguise. Of course. <laughs> and he could have just been a guy trying to fool you with some clever, you know, right. trickery, right? Uh -huh. All of those cases, the time traveler, the sorcerer, the guy who's just trying to trick you, the magical inventor, the high-tech guy, all of those people are far more likely because they ex the this they are far more of a mundane explanation than a yes. god existing, which They're is natural. Scary. Yeah. Right, which is without a doubt the most complex card you could play in terms of trying to solve a mystery. And in my head, it's always extraordinary expectations require or uh what's the dread you want to help yeah. me out here e extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence right and mundane claims require mundane evidence. so like in my head i raise my i raise my expectations for evidence based on how mundane or extraordinary the claim is yeah. and if someone says it's just a guy trying to trick you with some radio earways i can believe that because i know radio earways exist and people try to check you you don't have to right. like reinvent the wheel but if you told yeah. me that a guy a time traveler was it was it my expectations are higher but at least, you know, show me that time travel is a thing. And I might come to terms with you believing that it's just a piece of science at the end of the day. And we'd yeah. adopt it as a, a thing that we teach in schools eventually, maybe. But if you told me that it was like a, a magical dragon that lived on Jupiter, I'd be like, I need so much more evidence. And yet a God is greater than all those other previous explanations. And you believe yeah. it because it was written in a book that it, just some people wrote it in a book and you believe it because of that. I need far more evidence than that. Right, Why yeah. do you give? Why do you give God the what the God that's in the Bible, Jesus Christ and his retelling of events, the easy path to believing when when we could bring Jesus here in the present and we can interview him afterwards after seeing him heal a person's arm from de novo yeah. back to on? Why wouldn't you believe that then? But you'll believe it because it's in a book, right. a book that you already agree has wrong stories in it. Yeah. Dread, go on ahead. Sorry. I was going to say, uh, um, it, it, I invoke Christopher Hitchens, the Hitchens razor, which is hmm. that which can be asserted without evidence can be dismissed without evidence. Sure, sure. Arr. Larry, I see. Arr, I agree. Yeah. Larry, what do you think? No, it says it's there. There's an answer to it. You know, he says whether it's radio waves or earbuds or or aliens or whatever. There's an answer. But invoking God brings up so many more questions. Right. It's not an answer. And it's like, where did God come from? Does he have a family? Is he right. is he an alien or is he a programmer? Uh, How many have, gods are know? there? How did right. you stop at one? Right. Even in the Bible, he says we yeah. when he's referring to God. <laughs> so, I mean, it's not. And which God? I mean, there, humans have yeah worship you know, thousands of gods in the history of, of humanity the and, most, but it just he just jumps from right. you know unexplained to that particular god yeah the most bizarre rule that god gave was not hey there's no other gods i'm just the only one it's don't worship any other god except for me and i'm mm -hmm. like what does that mean what other gods what other gods <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So there are other gods, are there? You were yeah, yeah. oh, okay. even in Genesis, they said uh, if he eats of the, if they eat of the tree of life, they will become like us. Oh man! You know, like gods. Uh, what do you mean by us? Yeah. Give so, me some of that fruit. Centuries before. And aren't even made out of pasta? Mm -hmm. Zant Zantras three thousand says you shouldn't have these conversations. They're delusional. No matter what you say, it isn't going to change their mind. And then Anonymous replied, which is all perfectly fine until they start trying to change the laws to conform to their delusions. Right. Yes. Exactly. Right? right? right. right. Mm -hmm. That's why we speak. And up. arresting people for breaking those laws. Correct. Yeah. Or, or changing and, our culture, right? Or, or preventing uh, people from expressing themselves in the way that they is consistent with their beliefs like me. And listen, I'm also going to throw mm -hmm. this out too. I'm a much better, I'm just going to say it flatly. I'm a much better scientist when I let go of my dogma. Because it affected not, I didn't have to have these two parts of minds bring, brought to work every day. Like I could just bring one mindset to work, 
get yes. work done, and then come home and live by the same mindset where I appreciate evidential evidence and be willing to say I don't know when I don't know stuff. I've broken yeah. far less things due to an understanding that confidence isn't the best way to approach a situation and kept my my employees far safer when I realized that doubt and questions and doing analysis before you do new stuff is far better than just praying at the beginning of the morning, expecting God to take care of me for the rest of the day. Yeah. I value my critical thinking skills and anything that would inhibit that in my head is a detraction to my ability to be a good scientist. And so when I see a brilliant Christian scientist like my friend, I say to myself, he could have been better if he would be willing to be more honest with himself. Right. And, well, we, what the world is less without that. Yeah. As a what, you, what you've said there is you don't want to magisteria, as Stephen Jay Gould called them. Right. He, he thought there was, they didn't overlap. He thought you could have non-overlapping a, magisteria. Exactly. Uh -huh. yeah. And right. in, in the podcast that uh, Dredd has just um, drawn, drawn our attention to, um, Lawrence is talking and he says, um, for him, there's only one type of fact, and it's obtained by scientific method. That you, knowledge can only be obtained by scientific method. There's no other way of getting reliable knowledge. Now, that's quite a, a firm and extreme view, if you like, but it's, it's very difficult to challenge it. Mm. Right. Hey, we got a shout out from a fellow Pasifarian. Uh, Ken oh. Kenobi says, shout out to Dread, the satanic tape, the satanic tape temple. Wow. And spaghetti monster people get ridiculous. I'm sorry. I'm just chopping this up. The satanic temple and spaghetti monster uh, believers get ridiculed by Christians, but at least we stand for real things and understand the nature of our beliefs origins. Christianity has no concept. And then the next one was um, branching off the idea that uh, uh, everything's fine until the laws begin to change our society, which is why religious delusions ought to be recognized as a form of mental illness. If somebody started talking about how magical fairy Smurfs were doing all sorts of stuff in their lives, good or evil, and acting out on those fantasies or delusions, we'd recognize it as a mental illness and potentially force them to seek treatment. Yet when people do the same thing with established religious delusions, we treat such actions with legitimacy and even allow those individuals to steer our society. Gotta in fact, we do more. We do worse than that. We steer. Most people steer clear of it. They they attribute it to some other cause and mm -hmm. try to steer clear of any uh, religiosity aspect to it. Right. Like, imagine how many diseases we could solve if we didn't think diseases were things that are mandated by a supernatural God, or to get rid of them, we could do it by prayer. If everyone was actively working on like a secular scientific approach to resolve things like disease, uh, inequalities um prejudices that we have against each other origin of life origin of like where things come from answering quite bigger questions that we often give to metaphysical answer or or proponents how much better of a society could we be if we just gave us one year off from the dogma and let us actually think about these things in a in a in, a, in the best method that's gotten us all the other great forms of technology that we can enjoy and appreciate today It'd yeah. be an amazing thing, or at least recognize when we don't know certain certain things. Yeah, yeah. Before on, before that happens, before everybody starts to think critically, Dread, I'd like to suggest that we set up a company and start producing packets with supernatural noodles written on them. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Spiritual ramen. Yeah, yeah. We could make a. Yeah, meat. yeah, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm in it. Yeah, right. let's do it. Hey. <laughs> The Pasiferian is also from Canada. Maybe we can give you, uh, feel free to give me your context. He said, um, religion is the cause of so much pain and death all over the world. It affects, it affects many parts of our lives and the idea that God is imposed on us. God is a is on money, an American money, for example. I'm a teacher, and for years I had to listen to the Lord's prayers. For 30 years, yeah. uh, I lived in the U.S., and I sang the national anthem, which has God in it. But in Canada, oh, I'm sorry, in Canada, I don't care what people believe as long as it doesn't hurt someone, and we don't spend yeah. public money on it, as in the Catholic school system supported by provident, provincial government but the government doesn't support other religious schools. It right. might force well, people to really look at their beliefs and systems. So is Catholic school a thing in, in Canada? Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, in, in various forms of uh, Christianity. Uh, also, there are Muslim schools. So uh, mm. it's not just Christian schools. Of course, Muslim is a, an Abrahamic uh, religion anyway, but um, 
but uh, yeah, get that guy's contact for me, and uh, I'd love to hook him into my uh, into our local uh, pastafarian circle. Hell yeah! yeah. Okay. Because uh, God being on your money, that only began in 1955. Yeah. On I the it was paper, before, but... on the paper money, it was on our coins, like from the Civil War. Oh right, yeah. Yeah. Ah. But what what's really bad is that it's now the uh, official motto of the country. Yes. So it can it can be placed anywhere with impunity. Yeah. yeah. Larry, I got a shout out to you specifically. This is from Chimuela, who says, everyone needs to consider who they're talking to first, at least in South America. Would you dare tell a family living in extreme poverty, specifically women working in horrible conditions and surviving daily physical abuse or sexual assault? Some people just need to believe in fairy tales in order to not kill themselves. As long as they keep religion out of politics, education and healthcare, we shouldn't care at all. Otherwise, it's, we are just as bad as them trying to convert them into atheism. It's sad, but it's true. Unless I guess they themselves start the argument and push into a debate or no, are people. What no, you I disagree because <laughs> I believe so I. religion is keeping them in that position because yeah. they think that if they just endure through this life, they'll have a paradise in the next instead of trying to work right now to alleviate the situation that they're in, either by moving to a place where they can get the respect and the work that they need or um uh, you know making any other kind of change in their life they're just yeah. hunkering down believing in the next life and and being used by the by the society yeah and yeah. and further to that there is no instance where uh, religion has not infiltrated uh politics and other aspects of society so to say that as long as it doesn't Right. Uh, it should be okay. There is right. not an instance where it doesn't. So right. um, it's a non non sequitur. Right. I'm I'm reminded of that film that we talked about a couple of weeks ago, where a guy was an alcoholic, and he w didn't know what to do, and so someone gave him the Bible, and then all of a sudden that solved his alcoholism. And I'm like, all they did was replace one crutch for another except one was chemical and the other one was completely imaginary and based on false hope. And I'm like, they're both bad. <laughs> yeah. There's a ways to get rid of both. You don't have to, you don't have to constantly right. nicotine your patch away from like a bad belief. You could just stop having bad beliefs and bad habits. And, yeah. and but you, it, options for you to get you. The out. thing about it is again, uh, belief is not a choice. You're, mm -hmm. You believe things you're convinced are true. True. And, right. and you can't, it's just like, you can't just say, I'm going to believe in Santa Claus this evening. No, you're and right. believe it you can say it but you can't believe it it's you need to work to uh, find out what is true you actually need to put in the study correct and, and do ask the questions and pursue the answers yeah, yeah. you need to have an and, appreciation for critical thinking go on Jeff. Right. well that you make a very good point there because people who claim to be born again mm. can't be right it it is a a, a progression of belief or a progression right. of things it's, that are it's starting more to change your mind it's more until of a the point you say you're born again yeah. but it's not like it's not like the light that struck you like paul no. or saul it's it's not a, a flash of lightning it doesn't happen that way and and you make and i think that's a really good point is that we don't come to our beliefs instantly and nor can we divest ourselves of them instantly it's a process right interestingly of course Cassius Clay was born again when he became Muhammad, Muhammad Ali. Ali. Yeah. Oh, well, I, that, again, born again doesn't mean that you changed your belief. It means that you uh, changed your commitment to the belief. Right. Uh, you can make a decision to be more committed, and that's what that is. I mean, but you already well, have the belief before you make that commitment. Guys, exactly. It's it, and it's like uh, you know someone uh, becoming or, or coming out as an atheist. Right. It, you, it didn't happen just like that. And the time you told your parents or your friends that you were, you, you never call yourself a born again atheist, but when you come out, it's a sudden change for everyone else. Right. But for you, it's been a long transition right. uh, through uh, examination and, and all the rest of it. So. Six months, if not right. years. And, and here's my here's my little caveat. I don't believe religion is a, a mental illness. I believe it in the same sense that someone just saw a magic trick and was convinced because of how it was presented in the audience they were in that it was a real thing. 
But if they were given an opportunity to understand the mechanics of like how things operate and, and appreciate it and be willing to let go of the need to believe that the magical trick was was a true thing, they would run, they would realize these people who are around me were incorrect when they were telling me that they had a good reason to believe this because now I have a higher appreciation for understanding real things versus not real things. And so it's just a person who's been fooled. And there's, that's not necessarily a mental illness, but there's a way to fool yourself that in my head, I find just as dangerous as, as, um, as an illness that could be prescribed to you. And so, yeah. uh, Chimo, oh, I'm sorry, what was your name again? Chamela said again, why is a response to, uh, Larry, um, you guys were sounded like you were calling uh, religion a mental illness. Well, according to an article I just read, 84% uh, stats might have changed by now of the world's population believes in some religion. Are you saying 84% of the population is mentally ill? How about people that believe in ghosts or local myths, myths and legends? Are they mentally ill too? Do they make Are... laws? <laughs> John, Richards, John Richards, do you have a comment on that? Uh, well, I certainly <laughs> I could I could do a debate against Larry, uh, Larry on this because uh, I think that belief is a choice, and I can. It would be an interesting to and fro. We ought to probably have just this. how you probably uh, sure. just how you define it. Yeah, so. yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'd love to be in on that one. Yeah, we're we're running close on time. We probably should. Yeah, uh, we are. Thank you guys so much for all these comments. Wow, I really really love this. This is a great discussion. Yeah, guys, let's wrap up then. Um, basically. I don't, I felt a little frustrated after talking to my Christian friend, but I also realized that it's a good thing to speak up when things like this happen, because it's only by being quiet do I foster an environment where this kind of Christian scientist cognitive dissonance is seen as okay. And if I can have these reasonable conversations with someone without making it crazy or argumentative and still be friends afterwards, I can at least present the idea of I'm someone you can talk to if you do feel like some things don't add up, because I can be an objective third party that's not part of your religious sect mm. that can tell you if I'm convinced by the reasoning that you're presenting. I want to mm. be that for Hindus. I want to be that for Buddhism, Christians, everyone else, even Pasifarians to some extent. I just feel like it's good for us to be able to rationalize our ideas behind, with each other so that the best ones float to the top and the worst ones sink and go away forever. And in the same way how Dred's bringing up these arguments to his board and his political groups, I think we should be willing to do so at least on one-on-one -on -one conversations with people because that's how we can change our culture on a one-by-one -one basis. John, what do you got? Well, I've got um, lots of stuff on Free Thought Channel. You sure do. More stuff, more stuff added every day, almost. And uh, a lovely uh, Global Atheist News review coming up in a few hours' time. And I hope that you two guys, um, Ty and Dredd, are going to be in it. Uh, Frank sent his apologies. He's driving back from his army reunion. And Scott can't join us again. He's still on holiday in California. But Tercia will be with us. And uh, I think Guy and some other people. So we'll have a good panel of opinionated people. Nice. And we'll deal with our views of the news. And one day that boat will go to the other side of the screen. We can we can cross our fingers and pray for it. It will be a miraculous event of healing. Dread, what do you got for us? Uh, well, I uh, of course I stream this live at seven a.m. on Sunday mornings um, at my channel, Mind Pirate YouTube channel, Mind Pirate M I N D P Y R A T E. I've also uh, been doing some uh, Friday uh, invocations and benedictions of the, for our Pastafarian friends. So uh, yeah, uh, come on board, uh, check it out. If you like, please subscribe. Love to see you. Chamela, you're making some very, very good points that we may want to make into future episodes of the show. Uh, <coughs> just, she just Maybe made encourage, encourage that person to come on as a guest. Yeah, she just analogized, uh, or if that's a word, People believe in science in the same way that people believe in in faith and in, in gods because oh. they're just believing in the scientists oh. and they don't have necessarily a background in the science to appreciate the details. They're just believing smart people. Is is that any different than pastors or priests? I love it. Maybe we'll talk about that in the next episode. We ought to. Yes, that's an appeal to authority, and I don't. That's agree. a very good one. I'm just going to copy it here and leave it up to Larry. Yeah. Larry, why don't you take us out? <laughs> uh, yes, my content can be found at digitalfreethought.com. Uh, if you go there, be sure to click on the blog button for the radio show archives, atheist songs, and many articles on the subject of atheism. Uh, one of the things I'd like to say to Camilla uh, is that 
sure, 80% of the world believes in God, but it's not the same God. And mm. religious wars are a huge problem. Yeah. Um, remember, All those gods are mu mutually exclusive. Right. Every, remember, everybody is going to somebody else's hell. The time to worry about it is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real. Until then, don't sweat it. Enjoy your life. And we'll see you next Wednesday night at 7 o'clock on WOZO Radio. Say bye, everybody. Bye, bye everybody. Bye-bye. Ramen. -bye. Bye.